Hello everybody! I think it's time for another reading wrap-up. Where have the last couple of weeks gone? I feel like I just did this recently. I don't know, it's like, boom, here we are. I've read a bunch of things. Time to talk about them now. It is gearing up to be a really hot and sweaty day, and I am just having a really lazy weekend. So I'm gonna do this pretty quickly. Forgive me for not going into a whole bunch of depth on some of these. It's actually a really good batch of books, but I'm not sure I have a whole bunch to say about a few of these. So let's get into it. About half of the books that I have to mention today I've actually covered in other videos, or I will shortly, so I'm going to mention them really quickly. The first one is A Master of Gin by P. Jelly Clark. I really enjoyed this, and I've already done a separate review on it. This is his first full-length novel in this alternate history steampunk Cairo world. It has a really adventurous and mysterious plot, and it's really packed with a lot of little details that make the setting and the culture of it all really come alive, and I thoroughly enjoy that. Then I read three books in the SF Masterworks line. The first one was Odd John by Olaf Stapledon, which I kind of liked for the writing and just the air that it came from, but I found the man who was the main topic of the book to be pretty repulsive. I also read The City and the Stars by Arthur C. Clarke, which I really did enjoy for what it is, for a pretty solid sense of wonder, golden age SF story. Not my favorite thing by Clarke by a long shot. I'm a real Rendezvous with Rama fan, but it was still fun. And then Cryptozoic by Brian Aldiss. Just go watch the video if you want to know what infuriated me about this particular one. It could have been so good! And then it just hasn't aged well because it's kind of misogynistic, but whatever. I have a whole video about these three if you want to know more about them. I also continued on with the Vampire Knitting Club series by Nancy Warren. I read books 6 through 10, or rather I listened to them on audiobook. These are Fair Isle and Fortunes, Lace and Lies, Bobbles and Broomsticks, Popcorn and Poltergeist, and Garters and Gargoyles. I will have a video about this series coming out soon where I will talk about what I like and dislike and just how fun it has been to listen to these. So yeah, I definitely recommend these if you are interested in a supernatural cozy mystery series. This leaves me with six other things to talk about today. I'm going to start with the nonfiction, and actually one of my favorite books I've read so far this year. This one genuinely surprised me, but it was such a beautiful book. It is World of Wonders by Amy Nezuko Matatil, illustrated by Fumi Nakamura. And if I've gotten anybody's names wrong, I will correct myself with the information down below in the description. This is like a mashup of nature writing, memoir, and prose poetry. Nezuko Matatel is actually a poet, and I'm going to have to seek out her poetry and see what it's like. Her, her writing in this is so beautiful, so lyrical. It really made me feel strongly. I couldn't put it down. I read this entire thing, and it's pretty short, in a single afternoon, and I think I'm gonna have to buy a copy for myself at some point and reread it. Um, it really has lovely illustrations. Every chapter is about a specific, like, flora, fauna, and uh, kind of the author's relationship with that thing, her memories from childhood and adulthood, and... Uh, yeah, like I said, it just made me feel really strongly while I was reading it. I definitely recommend this, especially if you are like seeking out more nature writing from a personal standpoint. Like I keep saying, it was beautiful. After that, I read Breath by James Nestor. I think the subtitle of this book is like The New Science of a Lost Art. My dad recommended this book to me last year when he read it. He thought it was really good and really informative and like I would get something out of it. And I was like, okay, yeah, I mean, I'm generally interested in like breathing techniques and how that can help you with stress and your health and all of that. So I finally read it. I listened to it on audiobook and wow, this was really informative. I definitely learned some things from this. I've really only encountered breathing exercises and like the power of breathing through basically like mental health professionals and yoga practitioners all talking about how it can help reduce stress and help your mental well-being. I've never heard that many people talk about the real effects it can have on 
your body, like on your organs, on your mouth and your skull and stuff. And that's exactly what James Nestor is talking about in this. He goes on this whole journey about how modern humans have a, a ton of breathing difficulties, allergy problems, crooked teeth, sleep apnea, and it all comes back to our mouths and stuff are getting smaller. And a lot of it is because we're breathing, but also like chewing really differently from how our ancestors did. I never heard any of this stuff before. So it was eye-opening, also kind of lung-filling. <laughs> is that the word I wanna use? Um, it made me think about breathing more in terms of the physical process than just the mental effects, and I found that really helpful. Uh, so yeah, I would actually recommend this to a lot of people. If you want to learn about this, if you're curious about why breathing techniques are all the rage, well, they've been all the rage for a couple of millennia. <laughs> we just keep rediscovering the same thing over and over again, and then apparently forgetting it until the next visionary pulmonot comes along. So yeah, I found this really helpful and I read it at just the right time when I actually have started going back to anxiety counseling and the very first thing that was recommended to me was do daily meditation, do daily breathing exercises, and now I get to think about what that is actually doing to my body. Completely switching gears, I read Work For It by Talia Hibbert. This is a contemporary male-male romance novel. I think it's actually number four in a series, but I think it reads really well as just a standalone, despite some references to pr other characters' previous storylines. And this is a romance novel that I find really noteworthy, less for the romance, which was fine, but more for its depiction of mental health, which is, actually a trend I've seen in a lot of the romances I've really enjoyed over the past couple of years. This is about a man named Olu who is I think going through a major depressive episode um, after a really terrible relationship breakup where he was blackmailed. He's kind of like almost like physically repulsed by other people and he ends up going on this vacation to an elderberry cordial farm to help with the elderberry harvest to kind of get away from his life, get away from himself. And he runs into the farmer there, a man named Griff. They are attracted to each other, but they manage to immediately hurt each other. And then the rest of the story is how they work to come back together. And a ton of it is about the characters' internal journeys with understanding their mental health, in the case of Olu, his depression, and the effect that's having on his life and on his relationships with other people and what he thinks he deserves. And on Griff's side, it's more like his social isolation and how much he values his own work versus how his community views him, which is very poorly for no reason at all. So it was actually really lovely, but I can definitely see where this is a, a romance that needs to come with some content warnings for the mental health content. I think the depiction of depression and almost like self-loathing in some cases is something that, like I found it interesting and helpful to read and be in that mindset and understand what was going on, but it could be a little bit triggering for other people. So I really enjoyed this. Um, I'm not sure I'm going to go off and read the other books in the series, though, because I don't think they're quite the same type of thing as this, but I could be wrong. Moving on, I read Bloom by Kevin Panetta and Savannah Ganosho. I think it was Glenn who recommended this to me a little while ago, and thank you very much for that recommendation. This was a really lovely read. It's a graphic novel. I think you would call it YA or new adult because the characters are like right out of high school, going into college, that sort of age. Um, but I kind of read it as from the perspective of just being an adult. Um, so it's about this young man who works in his family's Greek base bakery and they're kind of struggling and he, he wants to go off and do something else. He wants to get out of town, move with his friends to the big city, you know, do their music, be part of the band, but his family needs him to be in the bakery. He helps them to hire another assistant who he thinks will replace him, but they end up working together like over a summer and, you know, love blooms. <laughs> so it was a really sweet tale about 
friendships, kind of dealing with toxic friendships as well, romance, what are your dreams, what do you do, what do you want to do with your life, and family, and I really enjoyed it. I also really enjoyed the artwork and just the style and the color palette used. I think there's actually going to be a follow-up in a couple of years. It may have just been announced, and I will definitely read the sequel whenever it comes out. I continued on with Oku the Inner Chambers by Fumi Yoshinaga. I read volume 7 recently. Funny aside here, I get all these through interlibrary loans. So I've been requesting a lot of consecutive volumes and manga series through the library. And with this volume, I never actually asked for it. The librarian who processes all the ILL requests just noticed that I was getting them and she requested it for me. I was like, just come get it if you want it. <laughs> I said, thank you. <laughs> Librarians are pretty awesome. So anyway, um, I have talked repeatedly about the series. I don't really feel like going over the whole premise again, but this particular one continues to reignite my interest in where the series is going to go overall because it concludes the really long flashback sequence and we're now at the point where the first volume began where Yoshimune has just become Shogun what's going to happen now that she knows the, the history of everything. So I, I really found it interesting and I, I want to continue reading and possibly the ILL librarian will request volume 8 before I get around to doing it myself. <laughs> And lastly, The Way of the House Husband, Volume 1 by Kusuke Uno. This is a humorous manga series that revolves around a single gag. This guy on the cover is an ex-member of the Yakuza. He was once feared, and now he is a house husband, and he approaches even the most mundane of tasks like grocery shopping and cleaning with the ferocity and scary tactics of the Yakuza. I found it quite amusing, but not like laugh out loud funny. I'm kind of curious if I should continue with this series though. Like, has anybody else read this past the first volume? Can you tell me if it's just the same kind of one shot gags or is there more depth or longer story arcs introduced to this? Because if it does evolve somewhat, I'll probably really enjoy it. But if it's the same thing over and over again, I'm probably not going to spend more time on it. But you know, just for some fun, it was a good read. And that is it for me. I really need to go sit in front of a fan now. It's definitely summer. <laughs> Let me know if you have read any of these books or if you want to, leave me a comment down below and I'll be back to talk to you about more of these things, specifically the Vampire Knitting Club, in the near future. And until then, bye.